can we ever be certain of our salvation? Or do we have to live an uncertain life, not knowing of our eternal fate, not knowing whether at the end of the day we're going to inherit the kingdom of heaven or if we are going to go to hell? The Bible says that it is appointed for man to die once thereafter the judgment. In the, in the book of Luke chapter 16, Jesus tells the story of Lazarus and the rich man, showing us that there are two destinations where the dead go. It's either heaven or hell. So how can we be sure that we are going to inherit the kingdom of heaven? When we read the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38, this was after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, after the Lord had given the Holy Spirit to the first church. And the spectators, the people who saw what happened, after the apostles had preached to them, they were deeply convicted of their sin, and they realized that they were going to end up in the pits of hell. And they said to the apostles and said, what shall we do to be saved? What are we going to do to escape going to hell once we die? And the apostle Peter answered them and said, repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So the Bible has given us a clear means, a clear road to salvation. And if we follow this road of salvation, we can be certain of our eternal inheritance being the kingdom of heaven and not hell. In John chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus tells us the story of a father who had two sons and asked the first son to go and work in the field. And Jesus said that the first son said that I will not go to the field. And when he asked the second son, the second son said, I'm going to do it. But the one who, who said, I will not go to the field, ended up, you know, changing his mind and actually going to do it. And the one who said, I will do it, didn't actually follow through with what he said. And Jesus asked a question and said, which of these two actually obeyed the father? And it's obviously the one who had initially said he would not do it, but ended up doing it. So Jesus was giving this parable to emphasize to us that our actions are much more important to God than simply our words. The Lord says that, why do these people draw near to me with their lips only, while their hearts are far away from me? Why do these people say that they believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, yet their hearts are so far away from him, yet their hearts follow the things of the world and despise the word of God. Jesus said that if you love me, keep my commandments. Again, the Bible says that whoever is born of God doesn't sin. He does not continue making a habit of sinning. And the Bible gives us a warning actually against those people who initially believe but turn aside. He gives an example of the children of Israel that let us not forget that God brought out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, but not everybody was able to inherit the land of promise. So the Bible over and over shows us how important obedience is to God. When we read the scriptures, we're going to find that God values our actions much more than our words. When our words are not followed through with action, then they do not mean anything. When we read 
the example of the first church, you know, the apostles of Jesus Christ. One thing that we are going to notice is that they were so certain of their salvation. Like they were not living a life of uncertainty, like not knowing if at the end of the day, after they have served the Lord, if they were still going to perish and go to hell. But all of them were so certain of their salvation. For example, Paul was able to actually write his farewell and say, I have run the, you have run the race, I have fought the good fight, and now a crown of life awaits me. He was so certain. It's some, salvation wasn't something you know, that he was only guessing and then could only be sure of once he dies. But even while still on earth, the Apostle Paul was still able to be sure of his salvation. He was still able to be sure that once, he's, once he dies, he's going to go to the kingdom of heaven. No wonder he could confidently say, I'm torn in between. I don't know what I would choose, whether to die or to continue being with you. No wonder he could confidently say to be absent in the body is to be with the Lord. Like they were so sure that if they're absent from this body, then they would be with the Lord. Jesus Christ has created a very clear path to the kingdom of heaven. Even though we know that that path to the kingdom of heaven is narrow. The Bible says narrow is the way that leads to life and few find it and broad is the way that leads to destruction and many walk in it so why do few people find the road to salvation when we come to, to matthew chapter 7 verse 21 we find that jesus was rebuking these people who were calling him lord lord they kept saying jesus is my lord and savior yet their actions were contrary to what they were saying. They would say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, yet they would not do what he says. And Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. The Lord Jesus Christ said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, yet you don't do what I say? This statement from the Lord Jesus shows us that to the Lord, it's not about saying, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Therefore, I'm going to be saved. And then you go off and live your life however you want. When we come to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, and we look at the reason why those people were rejected by Jesus when he said, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. The Lord made it very clear that the reason these people got rejected was because they were workers of lawlessness or iniquity and when we come to the meaning of lawlessness it simply means living as though god has not given you a law to live by you live your life as though god has not told you what to do as though god has not given you any instructions for your life you live a lawless life with no regard for the word of god First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10 says that, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of heaven? And the Bible goes on to list out the people who will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Even when we come to Revelations chapter 21, verse 8, the Bible again lists out the people who will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. When we look at all these lists that God gives us over and over of the type of people who will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. We are going to realize that all these are things that are against the instructions God has given us. When we study scripture, we're going to find that truly it's not just our words that matter to Jesus in order for us to be saved. That is why the road to heaven is narrow because Many people just want to call Jesus their Lord and Savior and proceed to live a lawless life and they are going to be rejected. Jesus tells us that 
anyone who comes to me, I will by no means cast them out. So Jesus simply shows us that, you know, salvation is up to us. He has paid the price on the cross of Calvary. But now it's up to us to believe in him as our savior and continue to abide in him. Because Jesus warns us that the tree that does not bear good fruit is cast down and thrown into the fire. So that is a warning about disobedience. But if we want to be sure and to be certain, like the apostles and like the early church, could be certain of their salvation and know that they are going to inherit the kingdom of heaven once they die, then we must find the road that leads to life that the Bible says few find. Very few find. And that is, we have to, be, to repent of our sins. Like the Bible says in, in Acts 2.38, it's not just about us saying Jesus is our Lord and Savior because he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, yet you don't do what I say? So we must be like that son. Jesus gave an example, you know, that son who actually went to do it. God cares about what we do than what we say. And the Bible tells us that God cannot be mocked. We cannot deceive him with our words and say he is my Lord and Savior but our actions must follow suit when we have believed in jesus and our actions follow suit by us continuing in obedience until the very end then we can be certain of our salvation because god has given us assurance of his salvation through christ jesus that jesus has paid the price on the cross of calvary and if we truly make him our lord meaning we submit ourselves to him, submit our lives to him as Lord, like obey him, not living a life of lawlessness. Because when we come to the great white throne judgment, the Bible tells us that each man is going to be judged according to their works. The Bible says that we must all appear before the judgment throne of God to give an account for our lives. And Jesus proceeds to warn us and says that even the words that we speak, he says every careless word, God requires an account. So that shows us that God is going to check our actions, not just what we claim. That is why we're going to be judged by our works. Our actions are going to show whether Jesus was our Lord. So if we say Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and proceeds to live a life of sin and disobedience. If we proceed to live a life of drunkenness, witchcraft, unforgiveness, envy, gossip, slander, if we proceed to live a life of fornication, adultery, all those are fruit of our unbelief. And the tree that doesn't bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And Jesus is going to say, why did you say, Lord, why did you say to me, Lord, yet you didn't do what I said? The Bible says that let us not just be hearers of the word, only deceiving ourselves, but rather let us be doers of the word. So when we hear the word of God and, you know, and we say, no, Jesus is my Lord. I accept what he has done on the cross of Calvary. I put my faith in him, but we don't follow that with action. We don't actually do what God says. We don't actually do what Jesus says to show that he is our Lord. Then we are only deceiving ourselves. But if we want to be certain of our salvation, then we must believe in Jesus Christ. We must believe that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. And we must proceed to start to obey what he has said. When we put our faith in Jesus and live a life of obedience, we can be certain of our salvation. And God is going to give us the Holy Spirit, whom he says is a seal and a token that God gives us. You know, it's a token that the Lord God has given us as assurance 
of his salvation and as assurance that we're going to inherit his kingdom. He gives us the Holy Spirit to lead us and to convict us and to keep us, to teach us and to keep us separate from the world because the Bible says that God is able to keep us from falling. So we can have this assurance that if we continue to obey the Lord Jesus and continue to seek him, depending on Jesus, you know, because obedience to Jesus isn't just about us just following rules, you know, without having a relationship with Jesus, like without prayer, without seeking God ourselves, because we're going to find ourselves failing to obey the Lord because we're going to be overpowered by the flesh. If we feed the flesh, we are going to reap of the flesh, but we have to starve our flesh and begin to feed the spirit so that we may bear the fruit of the spirit that is pleasing to God and that brings glory to the name of Jesus. And we can be certain that when, when we die or when Jesus comes, we're going to be found in him. And we're not going to be ashamed because Jesus is faithful and he is good. Jesus is faithful. And if we follow him with all of our hearts, we can be certain that he is going to make sure that we are saved because he has already bought us by his precious blood. He has already paid the price. The road to salvation begins at Calvary. And then we have to continue on the straight and narrow path, not looking to the left, not looking to the right, but looking to Jesus Christ alone, the author and the finisher of our salvation. I had shared with you uh, a revelation that Jesus Christ had given to my husband. He saw the holy city up on a mountain and there was a path that was leading to that city. That path began at Calvary. It began at the place where Jesus Christ was crucified and where he died. And as you leave Calvary and begin to move towards the holy city, there were steps that were ascending to the city. And on each step were, were inscribed the scriptures, the word of God, you know, scriptures from the Bible, all the books of the Bible were inscribed leading up to that city. And God was just using this illustration, you know, to show how salvation really is. It begins at Calvary. You know, it begins with you believing in the sacrifice of Jesus, because even though you may obey all the instructions of God about how to live your life, you know, and begin to, or to live in obedience, Without you first believing in Jesus Christ and his sacrifice, believing that Jesus died on the cross, believing that his sacrifice made a way for you, for your forgiveness, you cannot be saved. So it begins at Calvary. You believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now you must follow on this narrow and straight path that leads to the kingdom of heaven. If you die, if you die while you are at the very beginning of your journey, which is right there at Calvary, you know, because everything was paid for and finished at Calvary. So even if you die there at Calvary, like as soon as you, you believe in Jesus, you die, you are going to go to the kingdom of heaven because it's, our obedience doesn't earn us our way. But our disobedience disqualifies us because Jesus says, why do you say I'm your Lord, yet you're not doing what I'm saying? So if you die right then, then yes, you make it to the kingdom of heaven because, you know, it's, it's got nothing to do with you. It's about Jesus. But if after you believe in Jesus and you continue to, to be alive, you continue here on earth, God expects good fruit from your life. He expects the evidence that you are his. He expects you to be separate from the world. The Lord says, touch no unclean thing and be ye separate and I will receive you. So God expects us to be different from the world. 
to be separate, to bear fruit, not to cause his name to be blasphemed. He expects us to bring fruit that are going to make people glorify him. So that is why, you know, in that illustration that God had shown to my husband that I was giving, uh, uh, that I'm using as an example, just to make you understand, you know, the, even though the road begins at Calvary, as you ascend, you begin to meet the books of the Bible. You begin to meet God's instructions, you know, God's instructions to make you live a holy life and to make you more Christ-like. And that is why Jesus said, get away from me, you workers of iniquity, because these people had believed. But when they had continued living their lives, they did not care to obey the Lord and they were rejected. But if we continue in our obedience to the Lord, God is faithful. Jesus is faithful. He says, I cannot cast away those who come to me. And he is going to make sure you are saved. And you can rest assured of your salvation because it is by the blood of Jesus. And he is a good God and he is faithful and will save you.